Toronto. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission here at Providence College. I'm also a Providence College alum, so in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I'm kind of biased when it comes to Providence College. I think that it's a pretty great place to spend four years to learn as a student and to grow as a person. And tonight, you're going to learn a little bit more about what it's like to study in the sciences at Providence College. Now, further in the interest of full disclosure, I was an English major, mm -hmm. so I tended to stay as far away from the sciences as humanly possible. It was not really my thing. However, if I had taken a class with the professors that you'll be talking with tonight, I think maybe, you know, it would have been, a, I would have warmed up to it a little bit more. So you're, you're in good hands to learn more about what it's like to study uh, at Providence College. So just quickly, I'd like to just go around and have our professors introduce themselves, and then we will kind of get started. So um, Ken, you're in the top left for me, so that's kind of my bias as to where to start. So why don't you just give a little quick intro? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ken Overly. I'm an organic chemist in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Providence College. Uh, and um, I, it's nice to have an opportunity here to tell you a little bit about our program, uh, what our students do while they're here, what our students do uh, while they're after they leave. Great. Dr. Van Riet, can you go next? Yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, good evening, everybody and um, welcome. Congratulations on your acceptance to PC. My name is Dr. Jennifer Van Riet. I am a professor of psychology and I've uh, been a PC for a little over a dozen years now. I'm a developmental psychologist, so I teach a lot of child and adolescent development and fun stuff like that. Excellent. And Dr. Toth, last but not least. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Chuck Toth. I'm a department chair of biology. I'm also co-director of the neuroscience program. I've been here 20 years. Uh, my specialty is stem cell biology. Fantastic. Okay, so as Dr. Van Riet had mentioned, uh, we again want to reiterate our congratulations to all of you uh, as invited students to Providence College in the class of 2024. Uh, we are excited that you're joining with us tonight and hopefully you can learn a little bit more about what it's like to be a student here at Providence College. So all of you who are joining us tonight have either already indicated that you would like to major in the sciences at Providence, or you're thinking about majoring in the sciences at Providence College. And so normally in this time of year, we'd be bringing you to campus and we would be letting you sit in on classes and having some face-to-face -face conversations with professors. Obviously that is not as it's not possible in the current climate that we live in. We're hoping that things return a little bit more back to normal for the fall semester. But we, again, wanted to give students the opportunity, at the very least, to chat with some professors and learn a little bit more firsthand about what it's like to be a student in the sciences at Providence College. So I think, uh, Dr. Toth, if you don't mind, I think I'll start with you um, in the bio program, just because uh, I know out of our students tonight, I think most of them or a lot of them have indicated that they are uh, currently majoring in bio. So I'll turn it over to you. And if you want to give kind of a quick overview, then we can get this rolling. Yeah, so, so thanks, Matt. Yeah, so what I really like and why I enjoy doing these admissions um, you know, sessions with everyone is to, you know, to be proud and talk about uh, the biology department. Obviously, it's a series of majors. You know, we have a BA in biology and a BS in biology. We also have a brand new environmental biology degree. And so people you know, take the particular courses they need to specialize in that given area for graduation. But importantly, for what I like to consider the program, it's more of a hands-on program where if you're majoring in STEM in any of the departments that are here, you know, you, you want to immerse yourself in the field. You want to get into a research lab, get into, get into a clinical setting. And the nice thing at PC, you can even start it as a freshman. Uh, many students start like that. You want to come here to engage yourself in the STEM field. Some of you may have career ob uh, objectives, some of you don't. You have four years to determine what those are by, you know, getting your hands dirty in the field or, or getting uh, wearing lab coats in the research setting or clinical setting. And so, you know, we really spend time developing opportunities for students to be flexible in what classes they take and what type of, you know, hands-on experience that they're able to do in the four years that they're here, even during the summer months. They work very well and a lot with the career education program in order for students to develop internships as well. 
Uh, the fortunately, all of us here have multiple connections with alums. The, the Friar family, as it's called, is a true living entity where uh, alumni are more than happy to help current students think about what they might want to do, talk with them about their career paths. And so, you know, you get this supportive environment that's developmental in nature where you have great uh, academic advising, great support from the campus. You get to take great STEM courses, engage in research, engage in clinical opportunities. Uh, those of you interested in study abroad, there's multiple options as well to study in abroad in various times of your career. So we really make an effort to effectively individualize your, 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 your opportunity and your experience here. Everybody is a bio major, but everybody has a different path, takes different classes, starts at different times. And that's just sort of that individual nature of how we try and view STEM training in, in biology and in STEM in general. Fantastic. Okay, Dr. Reed, can you talk a little bit about psych? Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, so the Department of Psychology at Providence College um, offers a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. So we have a major, we do not offer a minor. So I think that's important uh, for prospective students to know. Um, we also, as, as Dr. Toth just mentioned, um, work with the bio department to jointly offer a neuroscience certificate that's, uh, that's open to biology majors and psychology majors. So that, that's another option. In general, our, our philosophy is very similar to what you just heard about the biology department. So we like our students to um, be in really engaged in the types of psychology that they're interested in, whether that be research lab, um, whether that be clinical internships, whether that be um, uh, forensic based internships, just as an example. But our major sort of prepares students, it's designed to really prepare you for any option that you might go towards. So we have a set of foundational courses that everybody takes no matter what you're interested in going forward, because we really believe that that foundation is important for everybody, no matter what path you're on. So that foundation is, you know, intro, some research methods, statistics with the laboratory component. So everybody is collecting data with human participants which is exciting because that means everybody creates new knowledge, right? Even as a sophomore, you are creating new knowledge when you're here, which is so exciting. And everybody takes a class in development. Everybody takes a class in uh, biopsych. Everybody takes a class in uh, cognition or learning, right? So you get this broad diversity. And then the second half of the major, right, you really get to specialize in the stuff that you like. So if you love social psychology, right, you can take more of that. Um, if you love child development, you take more of that. So you, you really get to, to dig deep. And, and then you can really explore like the wide, uh, wide variety and diverse paths that our psych majors take, whether that is um, something more research-based or whether that's something more social-based. Um, like biology, right? We really encourage students to uh, study abroad or double major or have a minor, right? That's related to their, their interests. And our, our major is designed so that, that it's relatively easy to do that, right? It's, it's, it's you have the option to study abroad. Um, we work well with a lot of other majors um, and we really want you to customize that path and make it sure that when you graduate, right? You're ready for that, that next step. So I'll pause there and happy to address more if anybody has questions or comments later. All right, Dr. Overly, last but not least. Yeah, I've got some uh, little slides here I'll share. Perfect. Uh, and if I can go, there we go. Hi everyone, it's always nice to do these events and uh, congratulations on your acceptance to, um, to PC. Uh, so at Providence College, the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry offers um, a BS in chemistry, a BS in biochemistry. Uh, we also have BA tracks. There's a BA in chemistry, which uh, we have some really interesting alumni who've gone on and done some really fascinating things with. And we also have a BA in chemistry secondary ed uh, that we offer. Um, every once in a while, you can see that uh, uh, the Friar visits our research labs. Um, so our degree program, it yeah, gives you direct training and mentoring from PhD level scientists. Um, our declared majors are grouped together in smaller majors only sections for their chemistry courses at the uh, foundational level, general chemistry and organic chemistry first two years. 
At the upper level, we have uh, a developmental chemistry seminar program that gives students an opportunity to present research level talk after they've uh, reached that level in their career. And many of our courses fulfill uh, requirements in the college's core curriculum. So you get to double up on, on some of those things as you go along. Um, like the other um, STEM uh, departments, uh, we really value hands-on uh, work. Uh, and we have that in the form of very active research programs that are integrated into our uh, curriculum. Um, we it's a highly valued component of our curriculum. You have an opportunity to work closely with faculty members on important problems in the chemical sciences. And we have active research projects in several subdisciplines within chemistry. Um, and like my colleagues, uh, we're moving into um, brand new facilities. Uh, here's a, our new building and our, we're lucky enough to have brand new teaching labs that you can see there and uh, a few more of those are coming online here uh, in the near future. Um, and just to give you a sense of uh, where our graduates go, uh, we, we pride ourselves in making the best undergraduate chemists and biochemists that we can. And uh, our graduates have 100% uh, employment or uh, attendance in postgraduate schools. And you can see where some of them go. Uh, and at the bottom, you can see some of the, um, uh, the companies and some of the institutions where, uh, where our graduates go. It's a pretty broad scope of things, people working as active chemists, but also people working in related fields. You'll notice one of the things listed there is the Wall Street Journal. Uh, we have a recent grad with a BA in chemistry who is a health reporter for the Wall Street Journal now. Uh, and that's what, um, so it's a foundational uh, program in chemistry and biochemistry uh, that can lead to a wide variety of things uh, after PC. And if I can stop this. There it is. Sorry, I seem to have lost my pointer. There we go. Excellent. Right. Okay. So we've learned a little bit about the general overview of all of your programs. Uh, and I, when I meet with students and they are wondering about academic life at Providence College. Um, they wanna know what are some of the classes that I'm going to take? Um, what are the more interesting classes? So I'm not gonna ask you to pick the favorite class that you teach because I know for professors, that's kind of like asking you to pick your favorite child. Um, they're, you know, I, we don't wanna discriminate here, but can, can each of you talk about some of the, um, as Ken, you mentioned, the, the hands-on experiences that students get within your major um, and how that's unique to your program? Uh, yeah, sure, I can speak to that. Uh, you know, chemistry is a laboratory science. And so right from the get-go as a freshman, you're in the lab. Uh, and um, the you know, way our labs are structured, everything prepares you for the next thing down the road. So your first semester of general chemistry prepares you with the tools you need for the second semester of general chemistry. And those foundational skills you learn in general chemistry carry you on through the curriculum into organic chemistry and analytical chemistry and inorganic chemistry. Uh, and so there is kind of a, a march of development over the course of your time at PC uh, to make you into an effective laboratory scientist. Yeah, I'll go, ahead. I'll go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Um, let me just, I'll answer that question by, by giving some concrete examples. And I'm, I'm just going to use my own course, not because it's the best, but <laughs> because the one that's on my mind, although it might be the best, right? <laughs> right. Um, so, so right now I'm teaching a class called um, Experimental Developmental Psychology, right? So I told you guys, I'm a developmentalist. I look at how psychology changes over time, right? How, how we change and grow. And so right now I have students who are doing their own research projects in groups. So I have six different groups of students and they've designed their own projects and they are studying developmental questions about things that are really interesting to them right now in their lives. So for example, I have one group of students studying how um, adolescent sense of civic responsibility influences how you perceive the COVID restrictions that have been on campus right now. So right, are, are people with greater civic responsibility more likely to comply with COVID restrictions? 
right? That is so, um, so deeply on the minds of our students, right? That they're able to study that now. I have other students, right, who are looking at pandemic related stress and the effects that it's having on college students, right? So we're taking things that are, are real questions from your everyday life. And we're, we're adapting that to a formal um, scientific question, right? And going through the formal scientific process. So that's one of the things that's really cool about engaging in research here at PC is that, you know, sometimes you're doing things that are really relevant to your own life and you're using those types of curiosities um, to learn science. And the best way to learn science, right, is to do science. So. All right, Dr. Tilf, go ahead. Uh, as I said before, I'm a stem cell biologist. And so what I like to do and a lot of other colleagues is incorporate some of our research in our teaching lab. So I teach developmental biology in the fall, immunology in the spring, and um, not this year, but when you know things get back to normal and things people are in the lab, you know, I, I my students do independent research projects in development. We've grown livers, we've grown brain, we've grown neurons, intestines, uh, lungs, all sorts of interesting things that allow students, even in an undergraduate setting, to utilize human um, stem cells and do kind of interesting research. We, we did a assignment where all the lab groups grew human neurons in a dish and I asked them, you know, I'm going to be killing these cells with hydrogen peroxide. I want you to go to Amazon and find some over-the-counter medicine or, or treatment that would help cognition. And so they were, you know, picking out turmeric, they were picking out Tylenol, they were picking out you know, gold, all sorts of different uh, items that one might think would be touted as being advertised for neuroprotection. And we tested them in a lab, literally on the neurons that were grown uh, by the students. So like um, Ken and Jennifer said, you know, this hands-on work that students do not only is in the research labs, but we also definitely incorporate it into the teaching labs as well. So one of the things that I feel students are asking me more and more about each year is that they're much more aware of being able to do research than students from, I would say even five or six years ago. High school students now are really looking for those opportunities. Um, and I think a place like Providence, which is a smaller undergraduate institution, kind of flies under the radar about our research opportunities. Uh, I think people really associate research with large state universities but they aren't necessarily as familiar with some of the research opportunities that happen here uh, at a place like Providence College. So one of the questions that actually came through um, the Q&A from one of our students, and please keep them coming because we are happy to answer these, is does a student need to have previous experience with research to get involved in a lab or can anyone that is interested in research uh, be a part of that? Uh, so I don't know who would like to take that one, but I feel like that's a, a good question for, for all of us. Go I'll ahead, go ahead and start, yeah. I'll jump in. Um, no, absolutely no previous experience required. Uh, only your own natural curiosity is required, right? So, so, you know, I think for all three of the departments that are represented here today, formal scientific training and how to do research is baked into our curriculum. It's in every single one of the classes you're gonna be in. So from the, the very intro course to the most senior course, you're gonna be talking about how to do research, um, the best practices, uh, various different methods um, that are appropriate for that discipline. And so you will get the training, absolutely. Um, but you, you have to bring your own curiosity. Excellent, okay. So Ken, uh, or, Sorry, yeah, Ken, uh, can you talk a little bit about the what, like, what's the average class size like for chemistry students? Uh, you know, are, is it an overwhelmingly large space like you see in the movies where everyone is like stacked in stadium seating or what, what are your classes like at Providence? Well, we're a small liberal arts college and we pride ourselves on, you know, um, the teacher student ratio that we have. So the classes are relatively small, especially in chemistry. We don't have that many majors. And so, you know, as a freshman, you might be in a room with maybe 25 students in a, in a large class of, um, uh, you know, in a chemistry course. Um, and then in the upper level courses, because they get rather specialized, uh, you know, half that. 
uh, in, in many courses. Uh, we do have some large, larger lectures um, that, you know, that are kind of cross-listed with things at the, at the freshman level, but, you know, by and large, our courses are, are, are relatively small. And you get to know your, uh, your instructors quite well, your, your faculty members. Uh, the other thing we pride ourselves is, um, you know, the vast majority of our labs in particular are taught by our ordinary faculty. Um, and so you get to know your students really well and your students get to know you. Yeah, so, so building off of that, um, can, can someone talk about a relationship that they've had with a student where you've been able to keep in touch with them after Providence College um, and talk about kind of what they've done after PC? Uh, which one? There are many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I know there's a lot to pick from, but uh, if, there's, uh, if there's one that stands out. You know, since, because we're such a small school, you, 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 know, you typically have students in, in multiple courses. Uh, I have a unique situation. I teach organic chemistry. I teach our upper level chemistry seminar course. I may have a student for six straight semesters before they graduate. Um, and typically those students stay in touch, you know. So I have uh, now um, former students, good friends who are surgeons, who are faculty members teaching chemistry at other schools, who are working in industry, uh, who are writing for the Wall Street Journal, as <laughs> I mentioned uh, before. Um, you know, and it, it's really fun to reconnect with them uh, every, every once in a while. Um, you know, I retweeted uh, one of our alums um, tweets about an article she published uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, so uh, we have long standing close relationships. And we also have very loyal alums who come back uh, because I teach the chemistry seminar course. I'm often asking alums, hey, can you come back and give a talk? And they never say no. <laughs> uh, they're always very excited about uh, giving of their time and, uh, and sharing how they got to where they are. I mean, I'm still playing fantasy baseball and football with my graduates from 2008. So that's, you know, we, we develop these longstanding relationships that obviously continue for, you know, for, for decades in that sense. Are you winning though? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Well, I think that, I think that answers that question. That's fantastic. Uh, okay. So we have a couple more questions that came through in the chat. Um, so I'd like to get to those since those came straight from the students. Um, one student wanted to know how up to date is the lab equipment? Is the new building that we saw a picture of for all science classes? Uh, so I don't know who would like to take that one, but that's that's a good one to talk about. So I will say that um, uh, all of the psychology spaces are part of right now part of that brand new building. Um, so we were just lucky in that that the renovations to the building for us got to go first. Um, so psychology is nearly 100% converted over to new space. Fantastic. All right. Uh, well, another student wanted to know, I am planning to study science, but would also like to go into or possibly explore teaching. Are there any programs that would allow me to do both? And if so, how hard is it to switch majors if I'm not feeling right about my current major? You know, I know, you know, chemistry, physics, and biology, we have the secondary ed programs that, you know, that Ken mentioned in biology does it as well. So that's sort of the direct approach that people do for teaching. Uh, there's also the, the PAC program. I can't, do you have the acronym for that, Matt? It's Providence Series Catholic Teachers, I believe. Yeah, you, uh, Providence Alliance for um, Catholic Teachers, yeah. So, so we've had a number of students participate in, in that program and do science teaching after graduating with a science degree. We've had a number of students as well, you know, as they're teaching high school, uh, also develop and get a master's in teaching. I have a former women's basketball player that went back to her New Jersey high school, helped coach high school basketball, and in addition was teaching science and eventually got her master's. So you just don't have to do the secondary ed major in the majors. You can also look to do things as well in a, in a post back type setting for sure. Great. Uh, okay, and I have, um, and one question that uh, Declan had asked, or what are some of the examples of study abroad opportunities um, for students that are majoring in bio? 
Uh, pretty much anything. I mean, that's the thing that we, I just had a couple of Zooms last week with students. You can do the sort of the traditional biology type courses, which tend to be uh, popular in Copenhagen, London, for example. Lots of people do environmental type sustainability programs, say in Australia or New Zealand. Uh, in addition, now we have students that are wanting to go to Spain to complete their Spanish minor or double major in, in Spanish while doing that, or they do the PC in Rome. So our ideal for students for study abroad is yes, indeed, there are study abroad opportunities that are science related, but just as important, there are lots of other opportunities that are more humanities related and you know study abroad related foreign languages that are just as important and just as immersive and, and, and valuable. So we we think students should have the flexibility and decide where we don't, you know, they don't have to do science for study abroad. It's also it's awesome when, when they don't and take advantage of other opportunities. And I know you had mentioned that all of the classes are taught by faculty members. So are, are there any TAs that teach classes? Not TAs like they have at large universities. Uh, we have undergraduates that are hired as teaching assistants, but they're essentially just helpers in the lab. And, but there's a faculty member in the lab as the instructor of our courses. It's one of the advantages of a, a small undergraduate institution like us. Exactly. Uh, Claudia wanted to know if there are students that are, or she, she knows there are students on a pre-medical track, uh, but are there any classes in bio or chemistry that are geared more towards animal science, maybe towards like a pre-veterinary track? Uh, I mean, we, you know, we have an animal behavior course that's popular for pre-vets. We have a comparative anatomy course that our anatomist runs that runs through the different dissections of the different uh, evolutionary stages of animals. We have a number of faculty that work with animals, whether they are in a vivarium doing animal research jointly you know, run by biology and psychology. We have uh, the anatomist studies bird flight. So he's working on all sorts of awesome um, projects with that. Our evolutionary biologist studies dog and breeding and, and disease related to humans. So you know there are a lot of hands-on opportunities for students for classes and research. Um, have to, have to write a letter very soon for a person who's applying uh, to vet school. And, and, and this student also has a lot of experience with small animal and large animal uh, veterinary clinics. That's part of the important uh, you know, training and prep work for, for pre-vets. Our health profession advisor not only does advising for you know, medical school, PE school, and pharmacy, um, Dr. Lawson also works with pre-vets as well. Okay, so we have some of our both current students and alumni that are going to be joining us in a couple minutes. Um, and so I wanted to kind of keep to the schedule a little bit, but I just wanted to ask the three of you a final question before I, I let you go tonight. And that is, uh, can you tell us what your favorite part about being at Providence College is? Um, I guess I can start. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, it's the relationships. Yeah, it's the relationships you form, uh, the close relationships you form with uh, students, uh, the ones that you see grow from um, kind of anxious and nervous freshmen to, uh, you know, confident and capable uh, graduates. Uh, and, and then it's, it's always really, uh, uh, it, it's really valuable to see what they do after they graduate when they come back and how much their undergraduate experience here and what they learned and uh, serves them beyond PC. My, my answer to that is um, something that I sort of referenced earlier, which is that we get to make new knowledge all the time. So in every single one of my classes, right, I view my students as my collaborators. And so it's not just me standing up in the front of the class, like spouting off facts, right? Because you can Google facts. Like facts are easy to find. Um, what we do in the class is very different, right? We collaborate together and we, we produce new knowledge and that is so exciting. It's a, just a joy to go to work every day. I agree with Kenneth, it's that interaction with students. We're a small school, we're, we're in the lectures with them, we're in the teaching labs. We see them, you know, in, when everyone's back on campus, we see them in the hallways. We see, you know, you develop really close relationships. And that's just about, classes, like I said, play fantasy sports, talk about movies, talk about music, you know, you, you, you get to become at the end, you know, kind of colleagues in a sense afterwards in regards to four years, especially if you're in your research lab, you really develop these close relationships that, you know, I went to large state school in Ohio, you don't necessarily get those same kind of relationships and interactions 
at, at some of these larger schools like you would at a school like PC. Excellent. All really good answers. I appreciate the time that you've taken out of your Monday evening to help us out. Um, so thank you very much for your assistance. Uh, I will uh, type your contact info in the chat, or if you want to type your contact info in the chat, that would be great because I, I'm going to continue to answer some questions that come up in the Q&A um, throughout the evening. If you want to hang around, totally fine. If you need to get going, that's okay too, but I'll invite our students uh, to kind of to, to turn the camera on and we can start the uh, student portion of the evening. All right. Take care, Chuck. <laughs> so I think uh, it's always helpful to hear from current students because they're the ones that will be able to give you the best idea about what it's like to be a student at our campus. So I always talk to families who are trying to make their college choice about getting in touch with as many current students as possible. Uh, so we have kind of a treat tonight because not only do we have current students, but we also have some current or, or recent alumni from Providence College uh, to share a little bit about their experiences, both on campus and what they do now. So if we could just start by going around and introducing ourselves, um, I will, or Brooke, you're in the top left for me, so I'll have you go first, uh, and then I'll kind of circle it around from here. Hi everyone, um, so I'm Brooke. I'm a current junior here at PC. I'm a psychology major. Um, I'm from Long Island. <laughs> Is there anything else I'm missing? I think that's I think a good, good start. Okay. <laughs> Audrey, can you go next? Hi everyone, um, I'm Audrey. I'm from the Boston area. I graduated from PC in 2017 with a degree in biology and a certificate in business studies. And I currently work at a tumor testing company here in Boston. Great. Maura, can you go next? Of course. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Maura. I'm also from the Boston area. I was a 2015 um, grad, which seems so long ago. And I currently work at Sanofi um, running some of their clinical trials in early oncology. And I was a biochemistry major. Okay. Krista, you're bringing us home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Krista. I'm from a small town in Maryland. I'm currently a junior here at PC, and I'm a biology and psychology double major with a math minor and a certificate in neuroscience. Okay, so uh, for each of you that have are majored in the sciences at PC um, or taken science classes and work in the science field, can you talk a little bit briefly about how you felt um, the the classes and the environment was like uh, with your professors. I, I feel like you know we've heard from the professors themselves earlier on about the small class sizes and the relationship that they've had. But I feel like you know we we need your experiences kind of to back that up uh, and reinforce that your 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 relationship with professors is going to be pretty close, even though the sciences are some of the more popular majors on campus. So can we just go in the reverse order, Krista? Can you go first, and we'll go back to Brooke that way. Yeah, I mean, I heard a little bit about what the professors were saying, and I'd, I'd really agree with them. You really develop a, a relationship with your professors, um, sometimes more than you want, because they know exactly how well you can do in class. Um, so I like to use the example, like freshman year, I was struggling in one of my math classes, and one of my professors actually pulled me aside during office hours and said, hey, like something's up. Can we work together to try to fix this? And she ended up making like a plan with me. So not only did she know me personally as, as me, but she knew exactly like what I could do as a student and really pushed me to be the best student I could be. Awesome. Laura, can you go next? Yeah, of course. So um, I think that was one of my favorite things about being a biochem major at PC. Like kind of like Dr. Overly said, some of the chem classes, especially your you know, junior and senior year, you're maybe six to 10 people. So you form like such a different relationship with your teachers and your classmates that you would, I think, at a larger school. Like we were so close and like, um, I know you guys aren't doing kind of remote now, but normally all they have their doors open. So you'll be in LMAG SOA, you'll be like studying and then you have a question, question on a lab report, you can just pop in. Like everyone just was like so welcoming um, and just wants you to succeed. Yeah, I have very similar experiences, but just, you know, to build off that, I was a bio major who didn't love chem, so I really was like checking off those boxes to get my biology degree with those chem classes. So 
freshman year coming in, um, you're going to class a ton. You have all of your labs on top of your coursework. So you have those really small class sizes in which you're not only just welcome to go into office hours, but it's really, as Maura said, like an open door policy. If you know where, um, where your teacher sits and they're kind of, they live there a lot of the day. So you are able to really, you know, get that extra help that not only is from those significant office hours, but also, you know, just on your own time and build that additional relationship that is outside of the classroom and not only just, you know, that professor student um, relationship. Yeah, I definitely agree with what everyone else is saying. Um, I'm actually in Dr. Van Reet's experimental developmental class she was talking about before and everything she said is true. She literally sits at a desk in the front of the class and participates in the conversation as much as we do. Um, another example I like to give, especially now, um, I had a class with Dr. Mendoza, um, RDSA, the year long research course, um, and the second half of that was moved to remote because of the pandemic. And the following semester, he reached out to my whole class, just sending us an email wanting to check in. Um, Krista was in that class, <laughs> we love him. Um, and he sent an email just wanting to check in on us and wanting to set up Zoom meetings, and see how we were doing, see how we were coping with everything, what our summer looked like and all of that, um, which I definitely really appreciated. Awesome, cool. So have any of you uh, done research on campus? Um, and if so, can you talk a little bit about what the process was like getting that research position? Um, and you know, how closely did you work with some of the professors during that? I think everyone is nodding their head yes. That is a good sign. Okay, cool. Uh, Maura, I saw you first. So can you talk about your experience first? Yeah, of course. So like I said, I was a biochemistry major. So towards the end of my sophomore year, I was finishing the year of organic chemistry and I actually had Dr. Pike for both semesters, which was great. So we kind of formed a relationship and being a biochemistry major, I was interested in like the actual, you know, chemistry, but then also the additional biology. So his research at that time was um, in Huntington's disease and, you know, was the organic chemistry combination with some molecular biology. So um, how it worked for me anyway, is I kind of just approached him, I think like towards the end of sophomore year and I was, um, he did have some seniors graduating. So no, he'd have availability. And like I said, I had just formed a relationship with him and I've, I mean, I do disease research now. I've always been interested in diseases. So I kind of just talked to him and he was like, that'd be great. Um, and then I started, I did it for my junior and senior year and it was great. It was me and another, um, like one of my friends that was in his class too, in my age. And then we got to work with him for two years and the project kind of took some turns. So we got to like learn a lot. And then it was also great. Um, my senior year I was able to go to the American Chemical Society conference in Denver and present, present our research and present a poster there along with some of our other classmates. So that was a fun experience. Awesome. Very cool. Um, Audrey, I saw you nodding your head yes as well. Yeah, so um, similar to Moira, I reached out to a professor that I kind of, kind of look at everyone's profiles on the PC website, see what research is kind of going on in their labs. Is this something that's going to spark your interest? So I was particularly interested in cancer research. So I had reached out to a professor who teaches physiology, which is really like a junior and senior course. So I had not yet met him, um, but he was so open to having me, you know, come into his office, express my interest, why I wanted to be a part of his research lab. And what I really liked about his lab in particular, he had maybe like one sophomore, a junior, and then a senior. So it was really nice to have that upperclassman relationship. I could get some advice. What courses do I need in what ways? What was it like studying abroad as a science major? You know, kind of just get those additional um, tidbits of information of studying at PC. Um, so I worked with him in his lab for junior and senior year. And I actually was able to work over the summer for one of the, so the summer session going into my senior year, um, live on campus and was able to continue with the research lab throughout the summer and then into senior year. I was also able to travel um, to Chicago to present our research at the American Association for Cancer Research. So that was an incredible incredible experience and I had made connections there that ended up being some of my colleagues post-graduation so it was unbelievable experience and the opportunity to do research really comes because PC is such a small school you have those small class sizes you're able to have those relationships with your professor so overall um, wonderful experience. So Unfortunately for both Moira and Audrey, the science facility that you saw some pictures of 
got finished after they had uh, graduated. So I apologize for that. I'm an 06 alum, so I didn't have Peterson in the gym. So, uh, you know, I get I get still bitter about that aspect of campus. But for Krista and Brooke, can you talk about some like what that facility is like and how your classes have been in that facility? Yeah, so um, especially for psych, uh, uh, Brooke and I both took Mendoza's uh, RDSA class, which is like a research design class. It teaches you how to conduct your own research. And I think we were one of the, the first classes that were able to use the, the study areas. I mean, unfortunately, COVID kind of interrupted it halfway, but um, we did get the chance to, to really dive in deep to just the whole facility. I know I worked with Dr. Revelo in her lab and and she just got moved to the to the new part of the building. So she's um, she's really, really happy about it. She loves having all the new equipment and everything. So I think the professors are really happy and it's really cool for us to see the, the change from the old equipment into the new. Yeah, similarly to what Chris said, um, it's really nice to have those new study areas. There's um, a lot of glass. So I personally like natural light when I'm studying. So that's always a perk. Um, I also do research in Dr. Wormuth's lab and all of our lab spaces are in the new part. Um, so we have three rooms. We have one like the computer main room um, and then two other rooms where we would have our families come in um, during normal times. And it's all equipped with cameras and microphones and Bluetooth TV where we can play videos because I do developmental research. So for the kids um, and we even have like a playroom where they can wait. Um, so it's really cool to have access to all of those spaces. And I'll even go in there and do homework sometimes just if I want a quiet space to myself. Um, and one of the rooms has like a one way um, glass window. So that's really cool too, just to see all the different um, ways that the science complex was fitted to our lab. I think I'm gonna take my next break in this playroom that you mentioned. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to know a little bit more about that later on. So this is a question for our two alums. Um, can you talk a little bit about how Providence may have prepared you for finding your job or the current role that you find yourself in right now? Do you want to start? Do you want me to start? No, you can go. I, okay. go. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, I worked in that cancer research lab and I was studying ovarian cancer as well as melanoma. And I, I really enjoyed my work in the lab, but I, I did want to have some more clinical hands-on experience with patients. Um, so PC also has this shadowing program. If you are interested in becoming some type of clinician or working in the healthcare industry, the hospital setting, you're, are, you have access to the network of alumni who have pursued a degree um, in medicine to shadow. So I was not only able to get that side of like the lab, like the bench work in my laboratory, but as well as get some experience on the clinical side of healthcare and in medicine. So I think the combination of having that research experience as well as experience within um, a hospital setting helped me um, not only receive my first job out of college, but also be um, more prepared for it. Um, and also just as a side note, the professors are always like so open to writing you a letter of recommendation, being that person that you can put on your job application as someone they can reach out to for a recommendation for you. So that also was definitely a, a big plus in that. Yeah, and I guess kind of going off what Audrey said, very similar. So Dr. Corneli is a biochemistry um, teacher and we do a, a lab with her. And at my job, first job out of college, I worked at a lab at MGH and I was doing genetic engineering research. And it just happened that what the program that Dr. Corneli had at that time was pretty similar to what I um, actually ended up doing in the lab because we were doing, you know, kind of some genetic engineering in a lesser degree with Dr. Corneli. So all those skills that I learned in her lab that I was just taking for, you know, my class ended up being pretty much probably why I got my first job out of college. And then, you know, I've kind of switched a little bit what I've, you know, done in my career because now I do clinical research and I work at a pharmaceutical company. So I'm no longer like doing bench work, but I actually was able to switch over to MGH where um, a fellow Providence love with my manager. So I was able to reach out to her um, and just now I've just kind of grown into the clinical research. But I think also not just taking those science classes when I was at PC, but also the core classes, because now I do some more management and people management, which is the things I took to fulfill my core requirements really helped me and has helped me grow um, where I am now. 
Great, thank you very much. So uh, Brooke, correct me if I'm wrong, you're doing, are you doing the neuroscience certificate program? No, okay, sorry about that. Krista, that's right, okay. Krista, can you talk a little bit more about that program and like how, like what was the process like to get into that program and what are, what are the experiences like once you're in it? Yeah, so I decided kind of early on that I wanted to be a biology and psychology major. And I was interested in that kind of, uh, kind of just interaction between the two of them. And uh, Dr. Revelo was actually the one that suggested hey, we have this neuroscience program here at PC and she advertised it to her whole gen bio class. Um, and so it's really simple application prog uh, <laughs> program. Um, so you apply and you fill out the application. Dr. Toth reviews them all uh, with Dr. Templer and they choose a small amount, but even if you don't get chosen, as long as you go through the course requirements and take the capstone senior year, um, there's always chance to be in the program and graduate with the certificate. So it really doesn't make a difference in whether you're approved or not right away. Um, I was lucky enough to be approved right away in my freshman year and I started taking classes right away um, just because that's what I wanted to do with my electives. Uh, I think some of my most interesting classes have been that kind of crossover between them. I'm taking neuropsych right now. Uh, we're looking at all the parts of the brain and how like damage in one part of the brain affects this behavior. Um, so I, I find it really fascinating. Uh, it's a really easy program to get into and you have, honestly get really close to the students because you take classes with them quite often. Cool. All right. So, um, Audrey, I, we had a question that came in about the business in STEM course, and I'm curious that if that's something that you took when you were a student. So I did not. I did complete the business studies certificate program. I, Got it. Like as I mentioned, I wanted to become a clinician originally, and then I realized I enjoyed the operational improvement of larger aspects of healthcare more than I had really realized when I started at PC. And I was able to start the business certificate program second semester sophomore year and still go abroad, still finish everything on time. So you still, you can definitely, if your interests change throughout your time at PC, and I know it's, it sometimes seems like I was a bio major, there's a ton of requirements and you aren't able to fit in these additional minors or certificates, you still can make it work um, with, the, with the science degree. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I want to reiterate something that Dr. Toth had mentioned earlier in regards to study abroad, even though I, I would say that the sciences and neuroscience and psychology are probably some of the more demanding majors in terms of the, the lab work that you do in addition to your classes, but everything is structured at Providence in a way that you'll still be able to fit in all of the other things that we're talking about, research opportunities, especially things like study abroad, different internships. Um, I feel like that kind of gets lost a lot of the time because we talk so much about what students are doing in the classroom, but we still want our students that are studying the sciences to be very active members outside of the classroom. So I think uh, for, for the next part, can we talk a little bit about what you did outside of the sciences at PC? Maybe some of the things that you were involved with outside the classroom that didn't really relate to the sciences. Um, so Brooke, can you start us off a little bit? Yeah, so um, my favorite club that I uh, participate in is called Active Mind. Um, and it's still psychology related, um, but it's- um, I'll allow it, that's fine. <laughs> it's outside of it, it's, it's an extracurricular. Um, it's a mental health advocacy club, um, so we kind of use raise awareness about different mental illnesses and raise awareness about the resources we have on campus and just emphasize that mental health is as important as physical health. Um, and I found out about this during orientation my freshman year and I'm now the co-president, so it's really cool um, to have progressed um, in the club as well as I'm progressing in my studies. Um, I'm also part of the Leadership Fellows Program, um, which I just started last semester um, as a junior. So goes to show there's always new opportunities at Providence. Um, and it's kind of just learning about yourself and your goals and your qualities and how to turn that into your unique leadership ability, which is really, really cool, especially as I mentioned, since I'm the co-president, need to have that and be able to implement it at the same time. Awesome. Audrey, can you go next? Absolutely. Um, 
So I was part, it's, again, like I, it's going to relate back to the science of that he just said, but it <laughs> <That's> is. <okay. laughs> um, I was president of the Heart to Heart Club. So this was, sounds kind of similar to Brooke, raise awareness to, about heart disease, um, raising money for the American Heart Association. We put on events during the school year, like a smoothie runs, um, little like challenge courses throughout the campus. I was also a TA um, for the biology lab as part of my junior and senior year. Um, and then I was able to volunteer with the Best Buddies organization that comes onto PC's campus quite often. So that was also a little great experience. Cool. Maura, how about you? Yeah, so I was um, kind of similar to everyone, able to do some things, you know, science related that were extra cultures, but also do other things. So I was an alumni ambassador um, or missions ambassador. Now I'm alumni. <laughs> But um, admissions ambassador when I was at PC, so I would have prospective students shadow me, be able to talk to them at info sessions. Um, I also was able to plan our senior ring weekend. Um, so that was one of my favorite things I was a part of. Um, I also was president um, of the chemical society. So that kind of entailed, you know, kind of incorporating new members, you know, freshmen, making them feel comfortable. And then we also did um, a monthly volunteer at St. Pat's um, High School down the road and taught some little like a, we ran their science club at, it was a high school and then I also was able to kind of volunteer um, with one of the daycares down in Providence as well. Okay Krista. Um, so currently I mean Brooke and I are both on admissions ambassadors so we we talked to you guys like like Mara was saying, we talk to prospective students all the time. Uh, on top of that, I am on club rugby and club volleyball. I'm also on the club sports exec, so I help organize all the club teams. Uh, I'm on orientation, so some of you might see me next semester. Um, I am in the Providence Animal Welfare Club because I'm pre-vet, so sorry, it's <laughs> related to my major. Um, and then I'm also in the works of creating a STEM outreach club with a few friends of mine. So. We're, we're trying to get that up and going for local schools around Providence. Cool. All right, so uh, to wrap things up, because we have another webinar that starts at 6.30 and it's on the same Zoom license. So unfortunately we have to kind of, you know, end this one before the second one can start. But for, our, for the last question tonight, um, if you could give someone some advice about studying the sciences at PC, what would that be? Uh, whether it's a specific class that you should take, whether it's an experience that they have to have, you know, what what do what does a student really need to know about being a, a science major at Providence College? Uh, I know it's kind of a tough question, but I feel like you're all really good at this. So, Brooke, can you start us off? Yeah. So my best advice would definitely be to get to know your professors. Um, as you heard the professors before, they love getting to know you too. Um, so definitely, like I mentioned, Dr. Mendoza, like I'll go on his office hours just to chat <laughs> or Dr. Wormuth, he's my um, research advisor. Um, I talk to her about all different sorts of things, not just research. Um, and they're actually both in the process of giving me post-grad advice. Um, and so it's definitely good to have those networking connections, but also just facilitating a relationship with some really cool people because I love all the professors in the psych department <laughs> and I'm not just saying that. Um, but yeah, that's definitely my advice is to get to know them. Cool. Audrey, can you go next? Yeah, I think um, definitely echoing Brooke to make relationships with your professors, but just kind of a broader advice would be to plan and be organized about how you see your four years at PC. As you mentioned, there's so much going on in campus, going abroad, the research opportunities, these incredible certificates that you can be a part of, but the only way to really make sure all that can happen for yourself is if you plan out um, how your four years will um, will happen. So I would say plan and be organized about your courses so you are able to take advantage of all the incredible opportunities PC has to offer. Great. Laura? I think obviously just kind of on top of what everyone said is I just really utilize all your resources at PC. Um, not only are you going to get such a good relationship with your professors, you're going to be in a lot of the same classes with the same people. So you're going to be able to form study groups. There's going to be, um, you know, people that took the classes as junior and senior that will be able to have study groups as well. And I just think um, even like we had alumni come back when I was there and I was debating kind of what I want to do with my career and just hearing them talk about like, going to their seminars and hearing what their experiences was, it really helped, you know, pave my life. So I think you have such a tremendous amount of resources at PC, you know, just really take advantage of them. Great. Okay, Krista. 
Yeah, I just want to mirror every, you guys kind of just said it all. Um, I really get to know your professors. Like Audrey said, I sat down my second semester here and made my four year plan just so I could take such advantage of all the classes, not only in the neuroscience program, but taking American Sign Language and animal behavior because I didn't know I wanted to be pre-vet until I took animal behavior. So just trying to try to broaden your horizons and take all the things that you're interested in because it's a time to explore your interests. Great. Well, thank you to all of our panelists, both our professors and for all of you who are donated some of your time with us. We hope that you've learned a lot about the sciences here at PC. I know that we couldn't have possibly covered everything. There's, there's a lot of questions that we didn't either have time to get to or that we didn't have time to cover. Um, so please let us know, contact us via the admission office, um, reach out to us and we'll be happy to get you in touch with either different students or professors on campus. Um, we wish you the best. I know you have a big decision ahead of you, but uh, you're always welcome in Friartown. So thanks again for helping out tonight and we hope you have a good rest of the school year. Take care everyone. <laughs>